Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutalesh Madhavakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namune Namaste Sarasvati Dene Gavala Vani Charine Nirvishesha Shunyavari Prashtaya Desha Tarine Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupada Si Arvaita Gadara Shiva Sadi Boga Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Okay, so... Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 So we're reading from Bhagavad Gita as it is Chapter 7, Knowledge of the Absolute, Text 28, Translation, and, Purport, by His Divine Grace, Aisha Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And we have the Bhagavad Gita, 7, Glava, Znania za Absolute, Text number 28, Preoti Komentar, Od Shiva Prabhupada. So, if you can, just by hearing, you can remember and repeat the verse. Yesham Tvantagatam Papam Yesham Tvantagatam Papam Jananam Punya Karmanam Jananam Punya Karmanam Tidvandva Moha Nirmukta Tidvandva Moha Nirmukta Bajante Mam Drida Vrata Bajante Mam Drida Vrata Yesham Tvantagatam Papam Yesham Tvantagatam Papam Jananam Punya Karmanam Jananam Punya Karmanam Tidvandva Moha Nirmukta Tidvandva Moha Nirmukta Vajante Mam Drida Vrata Vajante Mam Drida Vrata Yesham Tvantagatam Papam Yesham Tvantagatam Papam Jananam Nam punya karma nam te dvandva moha nimir nir mukta te dvandva moha nir mukta bhajante mam drida vrata yesham who's to but No. Antagatam, Antagatam completely eradicated. Papam, Papam sin. Grek. Jananam, Jananam of the persons. Punya, Punya pious. Karmanam, Karmanam whose previous activities. Te, te they. Te. Dvandva of duality. Moha, Moha delusion. Zabuda. Nirmukta, Nirmukta free from. Bhajante, Bhajante engage in devotional service. Mam to me. Dridavrata with determination. Translation. Per persons who have acted piously in previous lives and in this life and whose sinful actions are completely eradicated are freed from the dualities of delusion and they engage themselves in my service with determination. Личностите, вършили благочестиви дела в този и в предишния живот, напълно прекратили греховните дейности, се освобождават от бойнствата на иллюзията и се решително се вземат да наслужат. Purport, those eligible for elevation to the transcendental position are mentioned in this verse. Пояснение в този стих се споменати хората, подходящи да се издигнат до трансцендентална позиция. For those who are sinful, atheistic, foolish and deceitful, it is very difficult to transcend the duality of desire and hate. За грешниците, атеистите, глупаците, измамците е много трудно да преодолеят двойственността, желание и мразва. 
Only those who have passed their lives in practicing the regulative principles of religion, who have acted piously and who have conquered sinful reactions, can accept devotional service and gradually rise to the pure knowledge of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Само хората, които през живота са съблюдавали религиозните принципи, действали са благочестиви. Благочестиво и са превъзмогнали греховните последици, могат да приемат преданото служение и постепенно да се издигнат до чистото знание за върховната божествена личност. Then, gradually, they can meditate and trance on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Тогава те ще могат да медитират в транс върху върховния Бог. That is the process of being situated on the spiritual platform. This elevation is possible in Krishna consciousness in the association of pure devotees, for in the association of great devotees one can be delivered from delusion. It is stated in the Srimad Bhagavatam 5.5.2 that if one actually wants to be liberated, he must render service to the devotees. Mahat sevam devaram ahur vimukte. But one who associates with materialistic people is on the path leading to the darkest region of existence. Tamodvaram yoshitam sanghi sangam. Srimad Bhagavatam se kaza, че ако някой наистина иска да се освободи, трябва да служи на предените. Махат се вам, дварам ахур ви мукте, а този, който общува с материалисти, поема по пътя водиш към най-мрачната област на битието, тамо дварам и още там санги сангам. All the devotees of the Lord traverse this earth just to recover the conditioned souls from their delusion. Преданите на Бога пътуват по тази земя единствено, за да освободят обосновените души от тяхната иллюзия. The impersonalists do not know. That forgetting their constitutional position as subordinate to the Supreme Lord is the greatest violation of God's law. Impersonalists не знаят, че забравата на органично присъщата им позиция като подчинение на върховния е най-голямото нарушение на Божия закон. Unless one is reinstated in his own constitutional position, it is not possible to understand the Supreme Personality or to be fully engaged in his transcendental loving service with determination. Докато човек не възстанови изначалната си позиция, не е възможно да разбере върховния или да се вземе изцяло и решително с трансцендентално любовно служене. So this verse, Shiva Prabhupada quotes quite often. Това е един от стиховете, които Шива Прабхупат доста често цитира. If you, if we now we analyze it, we will see that just by following this, we Yes, as you said, this you can be elevated to the transcendent position very easily. Mm. So, problem, as we can see from this verse, is dvandva and moha. И проблем, който може да видим, описан в този стих е двандва и моха. Двандва means duality and moha means illusion. Двандва означава двойственост, а моха означава иллюзия. So, as long as our vision of the world is governed by duality and illusion, it's not possible to become Krishna conscious. Докато нашето възприятие е движено от двойственост и иллюзия, няма как да осъзнаем, да станем осъзнати за Бога или за Кришна. So one has to come to this state of nirmukta, you become actually freed from both duality and illusion. И трябва да стигнем до тази позиция, която ние да сме освободени от двойственост и иллюзия. Then only it is possible to accept one's constitutional position, that's The first step. И това е първата крачка, която всъщност ние започваме да разбираме нашата органически пресъща позиция. And then you act in that position. И ние започваме да действаме на тази uh, платформа. Which is called devotional service. И това се нарича предано служене. So, um, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed Sanatana Goswami, these two things were the first points being discussed. Когато Светец Чайтани Махапа го инструктирал с едната на Госвами, това били първите две точки, върху които той е стресирал. So, Сатаната Госвами approached Lord Chaitanya 
um, presenting himself as somebody who, well, is in duality and illusion. И Санатана Госвами, този друг мъдрец, той се насочил към Чайтани Махапрабху и а, той играл роля, че бил объркан в двойственост и в иллюзия. От материална гледна точка той е бил доста издигната личност сред обществото. Equivalent to what nowadays would be like the prime minister in a country. Еквивалента на това, което било по негово време, е съемо да бъде министър-председател в една държава. And there was a king also, but he was the prime minister. Just like in England, you have the queen or a king, and then you have the prime minister. Имало и цар, но в случая той е бил като министър-председател, както е пример с Англия. Uh, he was very learned in different languages. И той бил обучен в различни езици. And he was born in a very elevated family, a Sarasvata Brahmana family. И той бил също роден в такова много семейство, което има много знание. But because he had accepted service in the Muslim government, actually he was considered low class by the other brahmanas. И въпреки че бил роден в семейство на духовници, брахмани в Индия, той служил на мусулманското държава тогава и бил считан също за мусулманин от другите Still the people in the village they considered him a pandit, a very learned scholar. Въпреки това обаче хората от селото знаели неговия происход и те го приемали като пандит или а, така учен. But when he came to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he presented himself as a Nachi, a very low born person and ignorant. Но когато той се насочил към Чайтани Махапрабху, той представил себе си за много ниша личност и в голямо невежество. He said, I don't know who I am, but therefore whatever else I may know is practically useless. And I, I don't know why I'm suffering in this world. And he said, if I don't get answers to these two questions, then what's the benefit? What, what benefit do I get in life? И ако не получа отговор на тези два въпроса, защо, кой съм аз и защо страдам, какво, каква полза ще мога да извлека от живота? So then, gave him <coughs> the answers. И ще четане Махапрабху му дал отговорите. And the uh, principal point was that actually you are a spirit soul and you are an eternal servant of Krishna. That's your real identity. И основното нещо било, че той е душа и а, тази душа е вечно свързана с Бога или Кришна. And you suffer when you forget this. И ти страдаш, когато забравиш тази своя вечна духовна идентичност. So, everybody in the material world is in that same position. И всеки в материалния свят се намира на практика в тази позиция. Nobody knows who they are. Никой не знае кой е всъщност. And generally they also really don't know why they are suffering. They don't like suffering, but why they are suffering? I mean they get like upset even with, with the creator and therefore reject the idea of a supreme person. Хората въпреки че не обичат да страдат, страдат, но не разбират защо това се случва и започват да търсят проблема в създателя или в Твореца. I mean, if you're a little intelligent, you question, you know, why is this world the way it is? <laughs> if I would be in charge, <laughs> I would make it better. <laughs> I mean, seriously, that's what they think. <laughs> so, then they challenge, you know, if there's any God, First of all, that doesn't make sense. How can there be a God? И те започват тогава да да 
остават под съмнение съществуването на, на Бога. Because if there is, you say he is all powerful, right? И ако съществува, той е всемогъщ. And he knows everything. И той знае всичко. And he is all good also. И той е върховният добър. So, cannot be <laughs> The world is proof that this is false. И този свят обаче е доказателство, че той не съществува. Това е иллюзия. Because there's so much suffering. Има толкова много страдания тук. So, if you are all powerful and all good, then you arrange things in such a way there's no suffering. Ако Бог е всемогъщ и все добър, ще аранжира така нещата, че да няма страдания. That's proof. So that means because there is suffering, either this so-called God is completely incompetent. Доказателството, че има страдания, показва, че или така наречения Бог е напълно некомпетентен, или той просто не съществува. So this idea that he's been he's incompetent, that doesn't make sense. So therefore actually he doesn't exist. Това, че той е некомпетентен, нещо няма логика, затова по-доброто обяснение, че той просто не съществува. And then some of these atheists joked, you know, if he's there, if I, you know, die and then go there, I'll have a talk with him. How, you know, how is that you made this world in such a really shabby way? Някои ти си казват, когато умра и го срещна, ще се питам, ти защо си направил този свят по този странен начин? So anyway, um, We understand that this is just ignorance. Не разбираме, че това е така наречено невежество. We understand that the world is made in this way on purpose. И също разбираме, че света е устроен по този начин с определена цел. It's not meant to be perfect. Той не е предназначен да бъде съвършен. Suffering is incorporated by, you know, Very deliberate uh, understanding. И страданието всъщност е част от uh, изначалното планиране на този свят. Of course, we don't like this idea at all. На нас тази идея изобщо и не харесва. But that's why we, we don't understand uh, things as they are. <coughs> Но ето защо ние не разбираме нещата такива каквито са. And that begins with ourselves. As long as we think that we are just, you know, the combination of material elements, then that are, all that doesn't make sense. И ако си мислим, че ние сме просто комбинация от различни химични елементи, това няма смисъл. So, actually we are spirit souls by constitution. И по принцип ние сме духовни частици или души, We are eternal by nature and therefore to be in a world that is temporary and well basically temporary we can elaborate that that we are in an incompatible situation no matter what we do. И нашата природа е да сме вечни, това че се намираме в свят който е временен, просто се намираме в неправно неправно място и позиция. So here we have this word rida vrata which means you know becoming determined or taking a, a strong vow. <coughs> so the opposite of this is a griha vrata. That means somebody who is also very determined to <coughs> stay first of all stay in this world and make arrangements so it becomes as comfortable as possible. И обратното на това е личност, която също е решителна, но да остане в този свят и да прави ситуацията около себе си все по-комфортна. And that is on this kind of vow, it's also a vrata. You take this kind of determination happens or is only possible as long as one is in duality and illusion. И това също е обед и то се случва. Но той се случва основно, когато човек се намира в двойственост и в иллюзия. So, this is so important. Unless we understand this, there's no way we can make advancement in Krishna consciousness. Това е толкова важно и трябва, тези точки трябва да бъдат разбрани, за да е невъзможно да напредваме в духовното съзнание, в Кришна съзнание. We'll never have the determination to, to do what it takes to get to that level. Иначе никога няма да може да придобием решителност, за да стигнем до това разбиране. That's why before 
in the second chapter, Krishna talks about that. And he says, Bhogaishvaya prasaktanam taya parita chetasam. If the mind is very much attached to the world, although it may be imperfect, but we like it. So then there's no way you can become determined. Yeah, it's, it's a really unfortunate situation that although we suffer, like you know, Sanatana Goswami pointed out, he wanted to know why am I suffering, um, we don't really ask that question. За наше нещастие, въпреки че повечето хора страдат, те не си задават въпроса защо всъщност страдам. We, we basically we want to we try to counteract it, you know, by our scientific advancement. Not why I am suffering, how can I get rid of all the suffering? Ние се опитваме да противодействаме и вместо да задаваме въпроса защо страдаме, ние се опитваме So there's a strong, very great struggle um, because it's it's all pervading. Suffering is everywhere, so it's daily. It's practically a daily affair. So once we are really thinking about it, then we make plans how to. Counteract this situation. И прямо страданието ние по принцип правим някакви планове как да го противодействаме. Which is actually not, I mean, it's natural. No, every, who wants to suffer? Nobody wants. Even, not even an animal wants to suffer. Разбира се, това е нормално, естествено, защото никой не иска да страда, дори животните. If you try to hurt an animal, he will try to run away. Ако се опитате да наренете едно животно, то ще избяга. Even an ant, which practically Probably not very intelligent. Yeah. So, but yes, so we try to counteract that, but we don't really ask the question for the definite solution. So we rather try to make arrangements so that. The best thing would be if suffering can be eliminated, at least mitigated. I mean, somebody who's a little intelligent understands it cannot really be eliminated. But those who are really determined, Priyavrata, to stay in this world, they still have the dream that one day there will be no more disease. От тези, които са решителни да останат в този материален свят, те все още имат мечтата, че един ден болестите ще бъдат преборени. И още по-глупавите си мислят, че един ден няма да има старост. И тези, които са по-глупавите си мислят, че един ден няма да има старост. И тези, които са по-глупавите си мислят, че един ден Yeah, I, it, I could show it. You know, it's very large. It's a group of scientists. They are working on how to become deathless. Not by becoming Krishna conscious. <laughs> by making material arrangements. It will never happen. <laughs> It will never happen you become deathless. It will never happen you become free from old age. And it will never happen that you become free from disease. И никой няма да може да избегнем различните заболявания. Because the supreme power, whoever that may be, is so bad, he incorporated into the world and you cannot take it out. It's impossible. Защото върховният създател, който да е той, в кавички лошият, е внедрил това страдание в този материален свят. So then, yes, the question is, why has he done this? И въпросът е, защо е направил това? Yeah. The atheists take this as an argument 
that either it's, it's somebody you should actually forget about because he's so bad or he's incompetent or he really doesn't exist, doesn't make sense. So, to get into all the details takes too long, so we'll summarize it very quickly why. It is explained in scripture that this is the process to purify us. To bring us to our senses, to make us aware. That actually we are in a place that is not compatible with our nature. Like in the next verse, in the purport, first thing Prabhupada says, in, he says, birth, death, old age and disease affect this material body, but not the spiritual body. Um, well, we can actually read the verse because it says intelligent persons <laughs> who are endeavoring for liberation from old age and death take refuge in me in devotional service. Интелигентните, които полагат усилия да се освободят от старост и смърт, приемат обещи при мен, като ми служат с любов. Yes, so we continue in the purport. He says, there is no birth, death, old age and disease for the spiritual body. So one who attains a spiritual body becomes one of the associates of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, engages in eternal devotional service, is really liberated. Няма раждане, смърт и старост и болести за духовното тяло. Затова онзи, който получи духовно тяло, става един от предложителите на Бога и му служи вечно с преданост So it's completely logical because we're actually spirit, so we only can be really happy as spirits, not as you know bodies. So one who comes to this point of being freed from delusion and and um, uh, duality, then one will engage in activities that will bring one to this spiritual platform. And to be able to do that, that's the, actually the point of the verse, One has to continue, um, start, or yes, we can say start to act uh, sinlessly. Yeah. And that's a whole other subject. <laughs> But basically, you know, there are the sinful activities are condensed in four, which means, you know. Uh, eating meat, fish and eggs and um, illicit sex and intoxication and gambling. If one can avoid those, then we are on the path of liberation immediately. Yeah. And What mentions that these principles are, are an offer. You don't know, you're not, nobody's obliged to follow them. It's an offer by the great sages for those who really want to become liberated. Yeah. So, if one follows this path, then one will go beyond birth, death, old age and disease. So, 
we should use our intelligence to understand this, this struggle, this endeavor to change the material condition and make it perfect is a waste of time. И трябва да положим <coughs> нашата интелигентност, да използваме, за да разберем, че опитвайки се да променяме ситуацията, да направим света по-комфортен, всъщност това е невъзможно, няма как да избягаме тези страдания. There's, there's no need for so much endeavor. Actually, you just live a natural and healthy life, as you propose. Then, you know, that is taken care of. And then, from that on, you just continue with spiritual activities. Няма нужда да се полага допълнителни усилия, просто трябва да се следва здравословен начин на живот и когато той се следва, след това да добавим духовния начин на живот. But of course, this whole enterprise is existing and, be, you know, it, it, it's for people who already messed up their lives. <laughs> so now they have to struggle and make a big endeavor to change it to the better, which is how many cases are successful. Probably not even, I don't know, what is the percentage? Well, let's say here or somewhere else. Well, you know, people come overweight diabetes, heart uh, palpitation, this and that, they, they, they want to get healthy. That's right, so how many continue to follow? <laughs> yes. How many percent? Two. That's really discouraging. I thought it was at least... 50 or 60 or 70 or 80, 90. Maybe 10, 30% they follow. Okay, so that's not But many. Yeah? If they are also in the different, uh, you know, step by step, gradually they diminish many things after the next visiting us, they diminish okay. more things. And But still, it's, an, it's gradually... a big endeavor. Yeah. It's a big endeavor. So if one follows uh, the natural life of how, I mean, the way Vanasham Dharma proposes it, then all this would not be necessary. You become obsolete if people just follow the actually the, the style, lifestyle proposed by Krishna himself, but we don't. So therefore we have to take measures. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You know, I mean the like Krishna explains this in Bhagavad Gita, you know, how one can live and this sounds now contradictory in such a way that you can be happy in this world. <laughs> But one has to understand this properly. It means, you know, as far as possible, not with too much suffering while you are in the material body. That's what it means. It doesn't mean you live happily forever, You know, and, and just enjoy like in paradise without God. <laughs> you can't avoid completely even disease. Some something you know, the old age and you know death will come for sure. So <laughs> And some disease also. But if you do it the right way, it is minimum. But if one doesn't follow any of those rules given, and you live like, I mean, What a, what, a, what a word is appropriate even, <laughs> you know, really in a foolish way, just governed by your impetus of the tongue and the, the senses, then you're, now we have that even children already become obese and diabetic, you know, in five, six, seven, eight, or be, be low, ten years old. How is it possible? Of course it's possible. So, you know, that's all due to inappropriate lifestyle. Yeah, 
сетива и езика, тогава резултатът е, че може да има нещо време, дори децата вече са болни от диабет, дори от рак. Как, как е възможно това? So some who are in that, you know, working in that field of, of public health, they are sounding the alarm, you know, that things are really getting bad and it will cost a lot of money, our health system, if already the youth are in bad shape, the old, they forget about them, they already 70% are obese in the Western countries, so it's like hopeless practically, but it's like, yeah, you're going in that direction because you don't follow the, the laws given by the Supreme. Тези хора, които живе, работят за сектора на здравеопазването, те вече сериозно алармират, че ситуацията е доста притеснителна, защото 70% от децата, например, страдат от затластяване относно на тегло, но на практика може да видим, че това вече е почти неизбежно, защото не се следват просто природните закони. So these are the most intelligent people in materialistic society. Това са най-интелигентни хора в материалистичното общество. But they're not really intelligent. Те всъщност не са истински интелигентни. Those are really intelligent. They're endeavoring to get free from old age and death and of course disease by just going beyond the material atmosphere of illusion and duality. Истински интелигентни те полагат усилия да се отърват от тази иллюзия и двойственост чрез духовна практика и да могат да минат отвъд болестите, старостта и смъртта. So, with that I rest my case. <laughs> това приключва <laughs> моят случай. <laughs> Like in the courtroom, I've spoken my part, now the judge has to decide. You <laughs> can hear some arguments from the other side. <laughs> so, I think... Uh, I, I stopped at the right time. Okay, so... Thank you, Shila Prabhupada, Kijai, Kantaraj, Bhagavad Gita, Kijai, Sisi Mamitai Gaurav, Kavrinda, Kijai.